Hello ocean people, I am Maria and welcome to my channel. If you are new to the channel, allow me to introduce myself. I am Maria, I guess you've heard of before. Uh, never mind. And I am doing my PhD in marine biology and here in the channel I talk about things I like, marine stuff mostly, and how my life is as a PhD student and as a marine biologist, and also sometimes about other interesting things about my life. It's never really interesting. Last week I asked my friends to ask me some questions that they would like me to answer here on the channel. And Thomas asked me this question. Why does the sea make you seasick? Thank you Thomas. This question didn't come out of nowhere. So a couple of weeks ago I was on a research uh, cruise and uh, allow me to explain how things work on these cruises. You are either working or sleeping or eating or eating thinking you should be working or working thinking you should be sleeping or sleeping thinking you should be eating. Or like me, in the first couple of days, you are just seasick. However, thanks to the almighty Triton, I was only seasick for the first couple of days because then when work started, bye-bye seasickness. Hey, but now, now let, let, let's get serious. Why did I get seasick? So seasickness is the same as motion sickness at sea. And motion sickness can happen when you are riding a bus, a train, a airplane, a boat, or a ferris wheel, or a roller coaster, or any kind of ride that just makes you move. It can also be experienced while playing video games, through virtual reality, and even while watching some movies. We have three different ways in perceiving motion, through our ears, our eyes, and proprioception, which is basically the way that our body has to understand where it is in space, and it has to do with detecting signals through sensors that we have throughout our whole body. When it's also called the sixth sense. It's kind of cool. And motion sickness occurs when there is conflicting information in our brain coming from these different systems. The vestibular system inside our ear is responsible for maintaining our balance and orientation by detecting motion. This information together with the information obtained from our eyes and proprioception is utilized by our brain to maintain our balance and motion, for instance, when we are walking down the street, so that we don't look like we had one too many. However, when you are in a moving object, for instance, a boat, your eyes tell you that everything inside the boat is stationary, however, your ears tell you you are inside a washing machine. It can also happen the other way around, for instance, when you are watching a movie, your eyes are telling you that you are in a washing machine, while your ears tell you, no, 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 I am kind of chill here. This conflicting information is then transmitted to your brain, which then kind of goes nuts and makes you feel sick and occasionally vomit. Why does your brain do that to you? Not really clear, but the leading hypothesis is that this was a defense mechanism created by our body against poisoning. Because when there's conflicting information coming from your ears and your eyes, your brain thinks, wow. She's hallucinating, which is a side effect that might come from poisoning. And what is the best way of getting rid of the poison? Vomiting. Around one third of the population is highly sensitive to motion sickness, while the rest of the population is probably also sensitive to motion sickness in extreme conditions, like when you're in a boat in a very, very wavy sea. And there's bad news and good news. The bad news is that there's no treatment against the susceptibility of being seasick, and also not when you are already seasick. The good news is there are ways of trying to prevent to be seasick, like avoiding strong odors, not eating fatty, greasy, uh, spicy food, look into the horizon and fix your eyes on a fixed point, eat ginger, which is thought to be really good for preventing seasickness, don't eat too much, but also not too less, and of course there's also pills that you can take which will help you not be seasick. In my case, I tried all of these, very honestly. I was, I, I didn't eat any spicy or greasy food. I didn't drink coffee or alcohol. I was constantly looking into the horizon. I took seasickness pills. The only thing I couldn't avoid was the strong odors because I was on a ship which smelled like ship, surprise. But anyways, it was a small ship and so this oil, fuel, engine smell of boats, it never really disappeared, no matter where in the ship you were. So this didn't really help my condition. Only thing that really, really helped me was keeping busy. I think literally when I was busy, my brain forgot to be seasick. So I was just, it was just thinking that I had to work, that I had to do a bunch of stuff, and he just kind of forgot to be seasick because 
many times when I stopped working, I felt seasick again. Or when I had a like a more relaxed kind of work. When you're busy, your brain forgets to be seasick. So ocean people, this is it. I hope that now you know why you might get motion sickness. I also want to tell you, I have an Instagram and a Twitter account if you want to follow me through those social networks as well. I have to be honest, I'm terrible at Twitter. I think I have done three tweets, maybe. I will put the links or the icons or whatever it is that you can put. Seriously, sometimes I feel like I'm a granny in these things. Not sure what I am doing, but I will put it somewhere. And uh, yeah, this was it. I I'm, I'm hope you enjoyed this video and that see you in the next video. Pun intended.